What are the best decks to grind Legend right now? Whether you're starting from Bronze or are on the last push to Legend, this video might help you in some way. Hi, I'm Angel and in this video I'm going to share 3 decks that you can play to grind Legend easily. But before we jump into the video, just a quick reminder, I stream at least every Tuesday and Thursday at 2pm European time, so if you want to see high Legend gameplay and have a good time, then the link to the channel will be in the description down below. A quick disclaimer on the decks I'm going to share. They are doing really good in the current meta and have a lot of potentials, but I'm not saying you'll crush everyone with them, so be careful. Nowadays you have a lot of decks that are doing really good and the ones I'm going to share with you are part of them. You just have to find the one that suits you and personally I find the last one really fun to play. Just to let you know, I'm not going that much in depth about how to actually play those decks. I'm just sharing the basic stuff and some tips. So if that's something you'd want to see, then let me know down below in the comment section. Enough about that, you're here for the content, right? So let's get into it. The first one is the Stealth Rogue. I'm sure you already faced this one and the reason for it is quite simple. They are everywhere. Why? Because the deck is cheap, easy to play and has a really good win rate. But just to be clear, I'm not saying that this deck doesn't require any skill at all because the truth is you can really tell the difference between a good and a bad Stealth Rogue player. If you didn't know already, this deck is supposed to win very early on. The longer the game, the harder it will become for you, depending on the matchup. With that being said, let's go through the main cards and the deck list. Right now, you have two main versions of this deck one running with two deck land and the other one with two plunderer. By the way, if you want the deck list of this video, they will be in the description down below. So what you need early on with this deck are your minions. I'm talking about Spy Mistress, Sneaky Delinquent, Worgen Infiltrator and Greyheart Sage. These are the cards that will create pressure and force your opponent to be on the back foot. But one of the most important cards of your deck is the Self Sharpening Sword. If you manage to get it soon enough, you'll be able to boost it and deal an incredible amount of damage throughout the game. And to do that you have Nitro Boost Poison, Deadly Poison and Cutting Class. The last one is not really a boost for your weapon but will cycle through your deck and will help you in some way. Finally, the card that can show the difference between a good and a bad Stealth Rogue player is the Pen Flinger. This card can add a lot of damage if you play it right. The common mistake I see when I'm facing this deck is the usage of spells just to use mana. For example, if they have 1 mana left, they will use Sinister Strike. But the problem is that you don't maximize your damage output by doing so. Because let's face it, your Sinister Strike will always deal 3 damage to the face, right? Using it now or in 3 turns will not change anything, unless you win the game of course. So why not wait to have at least one Pen Flinger in hand? That way you create a scenario where your Sinister Strike deals 1 damage more thanks to your Pen Flinger. But besides that, the playstyle of the this deck is pretty straightforward. You place early minions and equip your weapons to overwhelm your opponent. And that's easy legend. Now the second deck, the mage spell damage like old times. This one is a completely different deck and another gameplay than Stealth Rogue. It's more considered like a tempo deck. I mean you're not going to win the game by playing a lot of minions and be aggressive. Your win condition relies on your drawing and your ability to control the early games and create a swing turn with your spells. You'll see what I mean, but first here is the deck list. You can choose to run either 2 Arcane Explosion or 2 Firebrand. Both are extremely viable. Okay, so let's see the main cards of this deck. Most of them are complementary to each other. You have your spell damage baseline, your drawing cards, your control cards and your spells to win the game. Everything rotates around your spell damage of course. As spell damage minions you have Lab Partner, Imprisoned Phoenix and Primordial Studies. This one can generate some powerful minions for you, like Astromancer Solarian later on Solarian Prime or Azure Explorer which will generate another dragon for you. Same for Steward of Scroll which will generate another spell for you. Overall Primordial Studies can give you a lot of value. Speaking of value, let's see the drawing card you have in this deck. You have Elemental Allies, this one will draw you a lot of cards thanks to your elementals such as Violet Spellwing, Confection Cyclone and Imprisoned Phoenix. On turn 3 you can already draw 3 cards and get ahead of the game. Next you have 
transition and arcane intellect. When it comes to board control, arcane explosion is really powerful against aggro because they tend to be wide on the board. Combined with one or two spell damage and your arcane explosion can turn into a flame strike. You have also Raz, which has the exact same effect as arcane explosion and firebrand. In short, the mage spell damage has a lot of tools to deal with early minions and it's the reason why it's doing pretty good versus stealth rogue for example. And finally with good usage of your spell damage you can deal a lot to your opponent's face thanks to 4 arcane missiles because you have 2 violet spell wing, 2 frostbolt and 2 fireball as well. The goal is to use your spells when you have at least plus 2 spell damage and if you add everything up you can easily kill your opponent. Of course you can also use your your spells to deal with minions if you need to but you have to be aware of how much is left for the kill that's it for the mage let's jump into my favorite one the enraged warrior this one focuses on having total control of the board to a point where you can otk your opponent the deck list on this one is pretty standard of course you can make some adjustments but let's keep this one for now as we did for the other decks it's better to divide this one into three parts your otk part your control cards and your drawing possibilities as I said, your goal with this deck is to OTK your opponent, so you have to know exactly how much you can deal at once. That's crucial. Just have a look at it. To create your maximum damage output, this is how it goes. First, you place your Corgron on the board, enrage it and shield of honor, and finally your Bloodsworn Mercenary to double it. Doing that will make you deal 20 damage in one turn. You can even push it to 32 if you use your Nitro Boost Poison. But if your opponent is low enough, you might only need one in rage to have the kill. Here is how it looks like in real time. Okay, that's how you'll win most of your games, but to be at this point, you must control the board. And you can do it thanks to the warrior toolkit. You have Risky Skipper, Armor Smith, Lord Baroff, Ankar, War Mode Challenger, Sword Eater and finally Blood Boiled Brute. All of these cards will help you deal with early minions and will create some counter aggression. Also keep in mind that your Risky Skipper Armor Smith combo can help you generate a lot of armor. And depending on the board you can also play your Risky Skipper plus your Blood Boiled Brute very early on. I have in mind the famous token druid like this one on turn 4. That way you can deal with the board and create a powerful board at the same time. It's amazing right? Now, don't forget that your main goal is to OTK your opponent, so for that, you have to draw a lot. That's where Battle Rage can help you. Combined to Risky Skipper, it can draw you a lot of cards. You have also Ankar that can cycle you through two of your pirates, or three if you use Corsair Cash on it. And finally, you have Cutting Class like the Rogue. Overall, this Enraged Warrior has a lot of tools and will take practice to master. But when you do, you can do pretty amazing stuff with this deck. About the Mulligan, what you want in almost every situation are Ankar or Corsair Cash, Sky Rider and War Mode Challenger. This will bring the most out of your early game as you will control aggression or create it. In some situation, you could also keep your Risky Skipper as well, as I showed you before with the Token Druid for example. Just to let you know, I play this deck a lot among other versions of it on my stream, so if you're interested in this deck, feel free to come by. Now, why am I talking about these decks? It's not that they are the only decks that will take you to Legend, far from it. But if you want to climb the ladder, you have to understand what you are playing against. And nowadays, the meta is more focused on Stealth Rogue, World Kick Rogue, Token Druid, Spell Mage, or Zoo Warlock. That's why I'm talking about these three decks because they are doing great in the current meta. You have two solutions about it. You can play the same deck and be better than others. I'm talking about Stealth Rogue or Spell Damage Mage. Or you can play a counter deck like the Inraid Warrior. This one might take you a few games to fully understand, but will give you great rewards. By the way, you might be wondering how I know what is the current meta, and it's really simple. I use Ashes Replay. It's a great tool to have if you want to become a better player and know what you're facing. 
I'll leave a link to that in the description down below if you want to check it out. And I'm probably going to make a video about it. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and find it helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Talk to me down below in the comment section about your thoughts on it and what you are playing on the ladder right now. And if you have any question, feel free to jump into my stream at least every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. European time. The link to that will also be in the description down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me and until next time, have a good one.